And welcome back to Stories from the River. This is your host, Charlie Maloof, and I've got an exciting conversation ahead of us. I've got my business partner and the president and CEO of Riverstone Logistics, Charlie Workman, on the podcast today in the studio. Charlie, welcome to the pod. Thanks for having me, Charlie. It's been a uh, long time we've been trying to get you. Uh, it's about time. Yeah, it's about time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's uh, it's interesting. We're both named Charlie. Yep. And we're going to get into some things that, like, I think some several, like, current memory makers may not even realize about, you know, the history of, uh, you know, Workman, Rodriguez, Maloof, and our partnership, and Broad River, and, and the genesis of Riverstone, and because uh, I was telling some people that I'm going to have Charlie Workman on the pod, they're like, we didn't even know that Riverstone started inside of Broad River, this, that, and the other. So yeah. some, something like that. So I think that's interesting. So, uh, but I'm super excited about what you've got going on and that you've carved out some time for me this morning to be on the podcast. Honored to be here. This can be fun. Welcome to Stories from the River, a show in which we go behind the scenes at Broad River Retail. I assume you've listened to a few of our podcasts. I have, I have. They're awesome. I love that you're doing this. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much. They're very kind. That's he wants me to be kind to him today. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, and by the way, uh, his name is Work Mon. Mm -hmm. It's I like to say it's Jamaican. <laughs> Just to, the emphasis on the Mon, it, the most common misspelling. Mon used to be the most common mispronunciation i've been called a lot of things uh uh but it's it's not workman although i think we created an email alias so that c workman we had to yeah, yeah. Got, got to you we so it's c workman uh and it's a great last name and uh it became you know honestly when we were both in the company you know working at broad river at the same time you know they're like charlie charlie and we, you became yeah we like to short things and you came cw which I shortened to C-Dub. C-Dub, yeah. <laughs> so, and then C-Dubs. So we're here with C-Dubs. <laughs> do they call you C-Dubs at Riverstone? Uh, I do get some C-Dub call out. Do so you really? it's lingered, yeah. I love that that legacy has continued. Yeah, I know, it's great. All right, well, we're having a little bit too much fun here. So as you know, since you've watched a few mm -hmm. of these episodes, we're going to get in, we're going back to the beginning, back to the love basics. It. So I'm going to give you a chance to just kind of take us back to the beginning. Tell us about you, your story, where you came from, and how you grew up and how you got into this this wild and crazy business. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, look, it's um, it, it, it starts as most stories do. I was born, so I, uh, I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. Bud and Kathy are my parents. Uh, I had two younger brothers, Andrew and Greg, and uh, I loved my childhood. I love Atlanta, so we... Uh, we grew, I mean, all my life, just Marietta, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, grew up, went to high school there, um, made a lot of friends there, ended up making a big part of my career based out of there. Um, but growing up, I mean, uh, aside from just loving life and being a kid, I think, I think we can all look back at our lives and kind of have this kind of museum that's curated where there are just some exhibits that stick out more than others. Mm -hmm. um, and I think where, you know, where I am today so much of it can be traced back to my dad and Bulldog Movers. Bulldog Movers. Yeah, Bulldog. Is that movers. for the Georgia Bulldogs? It is for the Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, absolutely. My uh, my uncle Jim Scott, he founded that company with a business partner while attending the University of Georgia. They dropped out of school. They wanted to do residential moving. They thought there was a need in Atlanta, Georgia, and Atlanta was it was about to boom. And he's a terrific entrepreneur. Uh, but he was young. He got into a really grimy, gritty business. And, uh, and after my dad married my mom, he invited, he invited dad into that business to kind of operate it. So. What was your dad doing before that? I think he was mixing concrete. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. he, he was not, also not an easy business. Not an easy business. And, and I, uh, I mean, I think we've, we, we've all got them, right? Like there's just images seared in your mind, um, from when you're younger and, and with my dad, I just remember him wearing the bulldog mover sweatshirt getting up really early in the morning. I was an early riser when I was little. So I'd peek out of my door. I'd see him, see him walking out. I remember him taking a gun to work. Oh, wow. Um, and you know, as I, as I got older, I don't know what age it dawned on me, what his, uh, warehouses and, and truck yards were in really seedy parts of town. Mm -hmm. Um, really just tough, tough areas where they could get cheap rent. And, um, that was close to where their labor was. And so, you do what you have to. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you do what you have to. Absolutely. And you make sure you get, you're, you're protected. Absolutely. So I remember that. And um, I think one of the things, I don't have a perfect dad, but I've got a great dad. 
And one of the things that he did so well with me was bringing me in early to his world, not creating a separation or barrier between his life away from the house mm -hmm. and his life at the house, but really giving me an opportunity to see it. Uh, I mean, I don't know how young I was when I went on the first move with him, just by his side. I didn't contribute anything. Mm -hmm. I was just there to witness, but I mm -hmm. saw my dad work his butt off. Mm -hmm. I saw him give direction. I saw him make people laugh. I saw him uh, cut checks to people at the end of the move. I mm -hmm. saw him, um, you know, have some tough conversations with customers. And, um, but he just always allowed for an open door to that. Mm -hmm. And then as I got older and more capable, um, or, you know, even before my teens, he was, he was taking me on moves with the expectation that I was going to get, get my fingernails dirty and then I was oh, going to wow. get into the mix. Okay. And, um, so that ended up leading into just constantly being really just adopted by his company and brought along into a situation where I got to watch my dad's work ethic play out in real time. I got to watch how he conducted himself. I got to learn, even if I didn't want to learn, mm -hmm. um, by being adjacent and present with him and, uh, man incredible experiences and memories growing up. Were you a willing participant on these moves? I mean, or was he dragging you along? Like, hey, hey, you're a 12 year old. Hey, yeah. uh, come on. And, and where was your mom in all this? Did, did, was she like endorsing it? Yeah. You, you need to get to work. Sometimes. Oh man. My mom uh, supported my dad's work ethic. Like, I mean, it, it's just looking back on it, I didn't recognize it then, but just her willingness to be an encourager and to be um, willing and knowing that her husband was didn't wake up at 4 a.m. by choice. Mm -hmm. He had to be the first one in the building before trucks launched at six o'clock. He had to know where everybody was going. He had to make calls if he knew people were calling out or not showing up, um, you know, and, and just whatever it took for him to be able to get that business uh, moving for the day. And, and also however long it took when it was all, he didn't leave until it was all done. Mm -hmm. So we always saw our mom as very, um, not just patient with that, but almost a look over there, what your dad's doing for you mm. kind of, kind of okay. mentality. Um, so when my dad got, I was probably, I don't know, seven, eight years old when uncle Jim sold my dad, the business oh, okay. and a business partner of his Greg Jordan's and it became my dad's business. I remember there being just a lot of pride and I wanted to go oh, on those okay. moves. Okay. I wanted to be a part of it. And, um, as I got older, you know, you get into those uh, young teen years, it becomes less cool to do that. You you want to go, you want to sleep in, you want to you want to go roam the neighborhood, you want to go, uh, you know, do what you want to do. Uh, I became less willing participant, but make no mistake, Bud was going to get his way, mm -hmm. and uh, he wanted his son very early to understand work ethic and experience it and get into it, um, and to put me into uncomfortable positions where I had to be the one lifting the furniture. I had to be the one dispatching. I had to be the one having hard conversations with customers. And I think, uh, I think if the DOL found out, it, it, <laughs> there, there might've been some violations, but there's uh, a statute of limitations. On thank that goodness. Now. Yeah. What a blessing though. And I, and I appreciate your perspective and looking back at that now as, as like, what a blessing I had for my childhood. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and uh, hey, I mean, and by the way, what is a tough conversation that a 14 year old is going to have with a customer? How does that go? Yeah, well, it goes like this. You're, uh, I still remember one very clearly. Uh, we're on a residential move and the, uh, they're each moving team. There are three people, usually sometimes more, depending on how big the house is. Uh, the, the, the kind of main guy just sort of disappeared in the middle of the move. The other guy damaged somebody's wall. Mm. And it was, uh, that never I, I was probably, I don't know if I was 14, 15, yeah, it never happens. Uh, 14, 15, uh, I wasn't old enough to drive and I was there kind of holding the bag and listening to this customer. Just, she, she was so angry with me uh -huh. and, uh, I didn't blame it. I didn't pass the buck. I, I don't know who damaged the wall, but I didn't pass the buck. Uh -huh. I did. I, I totally damaged things though, does to be clear. Got it. Uh, but, um, just not that particular, just wall. not that wall. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I didn't pass the buck and I just sort of absorbed it. And, um, that, I mean, those type things happened pretty regularly when I was out on moves and I was out on a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and so I got to a point pretty, pretty young where I could just have a conversation and calm a customer down, just simply calm them down and then get on the phone and try to work yeah. out, you know, what the claim situation yeah. would be or, whatever was needed at the time. So. That's so cool. I, I love that you were an early riser and saw your dad yeah. leaving the house early, packing his gun and going yeah. to see the neighborhood and then sometimes taking you, you know, uh, mm. I, growing up, I was the kid who was the, I used to stay up late yeah. 
And, uh, and then I wanted to sleep in cause I, I could stay up late and, and, and work or, uh, whatever. Maybe I was looking up stats for like sports or something or right. you know, yeah. trying to work on, uh, the picks for the football games or something, <laughs> uh, or building some little toy or, you know, whatever with Legos or brick blocks or something. But, yeah. um, my dad used to say, the reason I bring this up is if you're going to hoot with the owls, you better be ready to soar with mm. Eagle son. Oh, that's uh, a good one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He said that like to me that. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's funny because, you know, Drew, my son, first son Drew, well, he's an early riser yeah. and he's so disciplined on his, he, he gets up early, but it's interesting. He's not seeing me going to go mix concrete or going to go moving, but he might see me up mm. early on my laptop working. It's a different type of work. Right. Um, but I, I don't know if it connects probably the same way that, you know, a seven, eight year old might see, you know, their dad kind of going out in the type of work that, that Bud was doing. I mean, yeah. I, now I can really appreciate the work in the last name work. <laughs> he lived up to it. Yeah. And, uh, by the way, yeah. uh, did, did, did his grand, did, his, did your grandfather, did his dad do that for him? Like did what, what was his upbringing? Like? No, I don't think he did. I mean, uh, well, I'll certainly love my grand grandfather, but he did, he owned a small electronics company that but put electronics on boats, um, navigation devices, and um, so dad wasn't really a part of that. Dad dad just sort of roamed the neighborhood and had a good <laughs> <I> <laughs> good, got good carefree childhood. You okay, know? so you're at Bulldog Movers. You got a great childhood. Mm -hmm. I, I guess you you were playing sports and pretty active as a child. Very active, baseball, football, anything I can get. I love baseball and football, uh -huh. um, especially in my early teens. And uh, yeah, always looking up stats, so I can identify. Um, and um, but uh, yeah, very active. But bulldog always, always in the background for okay. sure. Yeah, got it. And so after bulldog, then so and then what? You you finish high school. You. Mm -hmm. You're probably state champion at something. No, no, not state champion at anything. Uh, limited athletic ability, but <laughs> um, but but a proud I you, athlete. I bet you were a bruiser in, on the football field. Right? Uh, I enjoyed hitting. Yeah. Uh, I did. I was a hothead in high school, so it didn't always serve me very well. But um, but I really enjoyed it. Loved it. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, again, great childhood all the way through high school. And uh, by the time I graduated, uh, I just wanted to go to a fun school and go enjoy myself. I wasn't mm -hmm. going to spend my spring breaks and, and summers on a moving truck or a home delivery truck. That was your mindset. That was my mindset. Okay. I just wanted to go get away from home and go uh, do, do something else and take a different path. I didn't want to be in uh, logistics at that point okay. in my life. I wanted to go a different direction altogether. And so where'd you end up? In logistics, but I went to Ole Miss first, and um, and I went to Ole Miss, and uh, that was what I was asking. Yeah, yeah, no, for, yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I went to Ole Miss, and um, and 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 just went there, looking to again get away from logistics, get away from home, go carve my own path. And um, why Ole Miss, by the way? I mean, by the way, I'm from Mississippi, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I grew up an Ole Miss fan. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but how did you go from Atlanta, Georgia to mm -hmm. Oxford, Mississippi? Right place, right time. So I went to see several schools and actually Alabama was kind of the leading contender okay. because I had a lot of friends that were going to Alabama and, uh, I had another friend named Nathan. He, he wanted me to go with him on a, on a quick trip to Ole Miss. He was getting maybe the opportunity to be the long snapper with, with Ole Miss. So he was, he was wanting to go take a look at it. So I rode with him there. Uh, it was LSU weekend. Um, so LSU and Ole Miss were playing. I got to go be in the Grove. Um, I'd never seen anything like it. That's a cool experience. I fell in love. Okay. I was, I was like, this is, this is the place for what me. What year would that, would that have been? Oh man. Uh, would have been, um, 96, 97, 98. I think I graduated in 99. So it would have been 98. 98. So, yeah. all right, we'll have to look up that Ole Miss LSU football game in the fall yeah. of 98, I guess it would have been. Yeah. I think it was, uh, it would have been Deuce's, uh, Deuce McAllister's oh, freshman yeah. year, maybe. Okay. Uh, so, so you graduated in 99, you said? So I graduated in 99. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you are enrolling at Ole Miss at the in the fall of 99. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now take us through uh, what happens next. I wasn't a good student. Okay. <laughs> so I got to school. I had a good time like, like kids do and got really distracted. Um, and, uh, but, but just, I did, I had a good time and, and the first year went by in a blur. And, uh, then my dad said, you know, he looked at my grades and he said, this isn't good enough. I'm not paying for your school anymore. Hmm. So uh, it was a, a pivotal moment where I had uh, I'd taken my first year and not had a goal, not had the right mindset going into it. Uh, my, if your only mindset is to go get away from something mm -hmm. um, and to go have a good time, well, that's, what you, that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but there isn't going to be much fruit on the other end of that. Mm -hmm. So um, I was really kind of in the wilderness a little bit. 
And so I did what, um, what was offered to me, which was, Hey, um, I've got an internship available, um, at Cardinal Logistics. Why don't you come? Who offered you this? My dad. Okay. Yeah. So dad said, Hey, come, I'm not paying for it, but I'll let you earn the money to go back and pay for it yourself. Okay. So I had to take the next semester off. So that summer, that semester, I, of my, what would have been my sophomore year, I'm, I'm, dispatching i'm routing trucks i'm in an internship i'm doing things with cardinal logistics management out of concord north carolina um, were you based in north carolina at that time i came up to north carolina i wasn't based i was based out of atlanta georgia but okay. i came up to concord and kind of learned the ropes and this is the fall of your sophomore, sophomore year because yeah. you missed the football season your, your second yeah. year okay. yeah oh, it's, bummer. it's tough okay <laughs> so but it was deserved and um and, and so i got got back into it there and uh, really just did not like it. Um, you know, I was, we were dealing with flatbeds and Moffitts and, um, I was traveling all over the place, uh, you know, Ron Conkham in New York and, um, you know, middle of nowhere, Texas. And, um, and I just wanted to be a college kid. All right. Let's press pause for a moment. Yeah. Your dad had bulldog movers and now he's at Cardinal, Cardinal Logistics. So yeah. give us the story of that transition. And then for those who don't know, what's a flatbed, flat Flat bed, sorry, and a moff and a moffet. What what are um, explain what you're kind of doing with those yeah. kind of vehicles are? I'll take it. We'll, we'll pull back a little bit. And when I was probably 10, 11 years old, uh, I remember my dad coming home and said that Bulldog Movers had signed a contract with the Home Depot to be one of their first outsourced home delivery providers. It was a really big day in our family's history. Wow. For him and his business partner, they had wanted to be more than a commercial and residential moving company. They wanted to get into home delivery. And, uh, in home delivery, they wanted to really go after that flatbed Moffitt piece. And the flatbed is an open top trailer. We've all seen them. It's got lumber on it, cheat rock. It gets materials to job sites. And then it's got a truck mounted forklift on the back, which in you know, Moffitt, people call Moffitt's in the same way people would call a Pepsi a Coke in the South. Um, it's, it's a brand, mm -hmm. but the truck mounted forklift, uh, takes the material off the, off the, the trailer and puts it wherever on the job site it needed to be dropped. So he wanted to get into that business. And when they got their opportunity and they had been meeting with Home Depot for a while and they, they had had the opportunity to be in Atlanta, one of the first outsourced home delivery providers as a part of a pilot. Um, it was just a game changing moment for, for Bud and his business partner, Greg Jordan. And, um, again, one of those moments seared in your mind, it's just in that museum. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, I just it gets that's how it gets in your blood. You saw because he was just like our, you know, our our family's changed. Like this is a big deal. Where'd y'all go to dinner that night? How, how did y'all celebrate? Know. We or probably you... had ramen noodles. I, I don't know. We mom mom was a frugal uh, oh, yeah. a frugal cook, but, but uh, I love how that's just seared. I mean, I can see you kind of reliving that as you're telling it. Okay, so you got that deal, but yeah. take, but that's at ten or eleven. Now you're like nineteen or twenty years old. So there's a ten year gap here, and, yeah. you, and there's Cardinal Logistics. So yeah. we still want to close that gap. Yeah, let's close it. Uh, what he did in that moment, what he and Greg did, was that they they really put themselves on a path to being uh, a multi service, heavy goods, big and bulky player mm -hmm. in a world without a lot of really good three PL options. And the Home Depot is a big name to have take a chance on you. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, dad did a great job at taking that business, what he started with the Home Depot and then engaging, going to JC Penney and going to other, other retailers and saying, Hey, I've got this service final mile. We'll make, we'll make the deliveries for you. Take the, take the liability off your hands. Most everybody did things in house back then. Mm. Um, but we're realizing that liability was a, a significant concern, mm -hmm. something they were taking on in mass when they did that. So they wanted to outsource it and they felt a company like the Home Depot felt like that would take them out of positions where they would have to buy a bunch of equipment and uh, put that on, put that risk on someone else. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and so he really seized on that. That's so, so entrepreneurial to kind of see the path Absolutely. and kind of go at it. That's yeah. a, that's a great lesson. I mean, yeah. I, I want to read the book on Bulldog Movers. But, 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 <laughs> I, yeah. hope he, I hope he writes it one day. But you're giving yeah. us a great Cliff Notes version of it. Yeah. Okay. So then so then they took that book of business and uh, and they, they drew some interest in uh, a company out of Concord, North Carolina. Uh, their CEO, Vin McLaughlin, approached, approached my dad and they ended up making them an offer and, and wanting to get into Final Mile. And they, they were traditionally a asset based, um, you know, truckload provider, mm -hmm. uh, you know, stemming out of the JB Hunt model. And 
and this gave them the ability to be uh, mode diversified mm -hmm. and to really get into this critical final mile piece. So they bought Bulldog Movers and uh, again, a life changing moment for, for my dad and my family. Um, where we'd gone from, you know, kind of, I'd saw, seen us go from a small split level home in a, in a not great neighborhood to, you know, to dad really, you know, building a business that provided well for his family and, and gave us opportunities we wouldn't want to otherwise have. When, when, about when, do you recall when that transaction took place? I was in the mid to late nineties. Um, yeah. Right before you went off to right college? Right before I went off to college, yeah. Okay. So that's so now, and did he have an employment agreement or was he running that division for Cardinal? Logistics? Yeah, so he ended up running their final mile division only um, and becoming uh, sort of the main uh, main person there. As part of the transaction. As part of the transaction, helping them expand um, that Home Depot relationship in particular to, mm -hmm. to many other places. And um, yeah, I mean, he, he really did a great job at growing that final mile piece for them. Okay. So now you're, uh, what would have been your sophomore year in college, mm -hmm. and you're running the uh, logistics routing for that uh, division, yep. helping your dad as an internship mm -hmm. to make money so that you can then go back to college for your spring semester. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that would become a theme over the next couple of, uh, of years. I would go to school. I would pay for my school with the money that I, I had earned in my off time. I would take another semester off. I would earn the money again okay. and I would go back and I would, I, so this happened multiple times. I mean, you're on like the eight year track. That's, that's it, it's a, is... it's a, yeah, it's a Tommy boy situation. <laughs> uh, but um, it's a, uh, look, we had, um, it, it was, it was not great. I mean, and, but I earned it and, and I was always self-aware enough to understand that like I earned this path. I, okay. I agree that my dad is not paying for my school. I would have some good, I've string together some good semesters there, but they would still be broken up. Okay. And he was pretty solid on not paying for it. Um, what was your major? It was uh, management, business management, okay. administration, I think. And did you know what you wanted to do? Not a clue. Okay. I knew I didn't want to do logistics. So how many years did you do this kind of alternating work a semester, uh, work a summer in a semester, pay a semester? So that happened two years in a row. And then I had a full year where he agreed to to pay for that year. And so I, I went I went back and I did that. And by it, the way, yeah. you're doing, you're paying out-of-state tuition. Was there, ever, was tuition. there ever a ch thought in your mind like, um, I, I want to go you know, in state and maybe I can be more economic, economical. I met a girl. Oh, at Ole Miss. At Ole Miss. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait, Courtney. Courtney. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, now your wife. Yeah. My wife. Um, so I, I, would, I, got I, would, I, be, got I would be, yeah, I would be remiss if I, if I, if I didn't say that, uh, Courtney, that, that's a pretty important job. <laughs> I was trying to wait for him to get to it. <laughs> no, I just, I, I was in love. Uh, and, uh, I knew Courtney would be my wife and, um, I, I just, I had to keep going back to get that degree and be with her. Yeah. So when did you meet her and how long did you guys date before you, got, mm. you guys got married? So I, I met her in the second semester of my sophomore year when I went back. Okay. And uh, her brother was in my fraternity and we got to know each other just sort of casually as friends. What fraternity was that? Uh, Alpha Tau Omega. Um, so we got to know each other casually as friends and we had a, you know, just a really, really good friendship really quickly, kind of just enjoyed being around each other and, and grew as friends. But, you know, again, I was there one, one semester, gone the next. And so it was, really wasn't fertile ground to, to, you know, root a relationship. And, uh, but then when I got back, uh, for what I guess would have been my, um, normal senior year, I, in reality, maybe <laughs> your junior year, right? Exactly. Uh, I really did. Uh, I pursued her and uh -huh. uh, we began courting and, um, it became pretty evident really quick that we were going to be uh, husband and wife eventually. Okay. So uh, did you finish that year, that full, full year? I did. I made it through a year. Okay. Decent grades. All right, yeah, great. Not, not so bad. what happened after that year? So after that year, uh, Courtney wasn't on the eight-year track, and she is ready to graduate, and um, she is a social worker. Uh, by the way, when we started started kind of being romantically involved, uh, she was pre-med, and I thought she was going to be a doctor, uh, neonatal. Um, so I was like, man, I got a, I got a sugar mama. Yeah, this is going to be great. <laughs> so I got time to figure out what I want to do yeah. with my life. Uh, she was the ambitious one. She was the ambitious one. And then at some point, uh, she decided she wanted to go from a really good paycheck to the insult of all paychecks and go be a social worker. So I still loved her uh, a lot. And so it didn't matter to me. But, uh, but yeah, so she, she needed to go do um, the last part of her schooling in Jackson, Mississippi at uh, a neonatal unit at, at a Jackson Mississippi hospital. 
And so I took my schooling that next year online and would have, uh, you know, would have, um, would have expected to just work out my last, I think 21 hours is what I was missing, uh, to just do it online, support court and get her, get her into the okay. social worker field. Where were you taking it online from? Um, it was, a I, I forget the institution, but it was recommended by Ole Miss and, um, at the time they didn't have that capability. So, uh, okay. they, so you didn't take it from Ole Miss. You, they recommended it. They recommended. I, I told them, "Hey, I'm, we got married that August." It's a minor detail. We got married August six, two thousand five, and we um, we went to Jackson shortly thereafter. I got a job at a little little outfitter called Buffalo Peak Outfitters, and took was taking my online classes, which I think you're familiar with, Buffalo Peak. Um, that's so, that's so wild. By the way. <laughs> we'll get, we'll tell you why that's wild in a second. Yeah, and uh, so. Uh, and she she did her thing and and we started the early days of our marriage her still in school me and a little sleepy hourly job and we were enjoying it i mean it was, it was great buffalo peak is like a independent rei yeah at a much smaller scale if you will um i think that's probably a good metaphor for them mm -hmm. in my original my previous career um I, I think it was with the first company i was with we did their website I think it was buffalopeak.net. I remember you telling me that. That is wild. Buffalopeak.net, I think yeah. is what it was. It may, may still exist. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, so you moved to Jackson. When I said where, I wasn't actually thinking it was not Ole Miss. Yeah. I wasn't thinking where you took those last credits. I was actually thinking where were you physically? Physically, yeah. Jackson, Mississippi. So yeah. you you moved to Jackson, Mississippi in the summer of 05? Uh, summer of 05, late summer of 05 after being married. You, you know what else is wild? Uh, I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. Yes, you are. Yeah. I had just moved yeah. in May well, May 1st, 2005 from Jackson to come to Charlotte yeah. to join Broad River. We <laughs> our paths probably would have crossed yeah. uh, a lot earlier. That's, that's, someone was trying to kind of get us together at some point. And I also hate yeah. for you that your semester's off. You had to miss football season at Ole Miss. I, I missed quite a few football seasons, yeah. yeah. Maybe you went back for the games to spend some time. I did. Yeah. I did. Okay. I made my way back, yeah. no doubt about okay. it. Yeah. So you're in Jackson for how long? And, and then kind of you, you guys are yeah. freshly married. Mm -hmm. And then kind of, uh, so 05, gosh, that's right around the time Katrina happened. That was uh, that was a really big event. And, and really what? I mean, it solidified the trajectory of my career. Okay. Tell so us, tell us about it. Yeah. 2005, Hurricane Katrina hits the Gulf Coast. And a uh, couple of key, key things to know. Obviously, I'm in Jackson, Mississippi, really close to the action, but just removed. I mean, Jackson got hit hard, but, um, but, but certainly was spared um, the bulk of the damage. And at the same time, my father still overseeing Cardinal Logistics uh, Final Mile Division, and they possess the contract with the Home Depot for the Gulf Coast. So um, just that that flatbed truck mounted forklift business. Mm -hmm. So Katrina hits, uh, and I'm still doing Buffalo Peak. Buffalo Peak's in kind of full on help people out in the Gulf Coast mode, and really they really stepped up, and um, I get to be a, a little bit a part of that, and then. Um, Courtney, you know, Courtney had a, a, a lot of activity in the neonatal unit around that time as well. And, um, I get a call and it's my dad. It's week, a couple weeks after Katrina. And, and basically the message was we are management teams all over the place. We don't know where some of them are. Um, we need a lot of help. The sleepy little contract just became potentially the biggest contract in the, com in the, in the country. Um, in terms of flatbed, truck mounted forklift, job site delivery, because rebuilding has begun. Wow. And it's a reality that, that everything needs to be rebuilt. So the Home Depot obviously was, was, uh, was playing a central role in supplying the communities with what they needed to rebuild. I mean, it was such a crisis situation was. at that time. So you're, you're getting called into the crisis to go help. Yeah. Because you're available yeah. and, and I'm available. Got experience. Very available. Okay. Um, my, my dad, my dad, uh, my dad called and said, hey, uh, hey, in 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 kind of his voice, the only the way only he does, boy, I need you to go uh, drop out of school, go down there. We got a trailer and a Home Depot parking lot. I need you to live out of there for a couple of days and just kind of hold it together till we figure out what we what we're gonna do. Um and I was I waffled. I was just kind of like, gosh, I don't want to be drawn into the this. I don't. Um, and you're, I kept, you're also just married. And I'm just married. And I know that means I'm leaving Courtney. 
uh, for a week or weeks at a time. And, and I just got married to her. And, and so we're in our honeymoon phase and, and I'm getting called into, uh, to an area where she's not going to be. So uh, I waffled for a day and then my dad called me back and said, boy, an offer like this isn't going to come again. So you can keep doing whatever it is you do, but, <laughs> but, or you can come take this, take this job. And, uh, he was very direct with me and as he always is. And, um, and so I talked to Courtney and said, this is just something I've got to do. And at the time I was just like, I am, I am a little lost. I'm, a, I'm in the wilderness. I don't know what I want to do with my life, uh, to support my new wife. And, um, so I, I said, yes. And I drove down there and it, I mean, people say it looked like a war zone. They were not wrong. Uh, it was, it was wild. And going to that Baton Rouge area, Home Depot, and getting in that trailer, it, it was, uh, it, you felt like you were kind of getting on the front lines of something where it needed a lot of attention. There was a lot of intensity, a lot of emotion, um, a lot of desperation um, around us. Mm -hmm. um, and that's true of every business down there and every everybody that lived down there. So I got, I got in there and I was on an island. I mean, I don't know how it happened. And I about would both thank dad and kind of wonder like, where was the support? Um, I just, I go there and, um, and I'm holding it together, um, for, you know, for weeks, just, uh, just trying to grit it, getting yelled at a lot. Um, the Home Depot needed so much more capacity than we had to offer. We were trying to get capacity there. I was trying to get people hired to actually deliver the goods into people's mm -hmm. homes or, uh, and, and to job sites. And, so it was a really stressful environment and um but i was trying to go home on the weekends good thing about flatbed delivery they're happening monday through friday when builders are at job sites not saturdays and sundays although they were at job sites then or uh in post katrina world um so i went home for a weekend probably a couple weeks into this this emergency gig and um courtney's sitting across from me uh we're about to go to bed and she says i'm pregnant and so you want to know, uh, and so many parents can identify, uh, so I'm, I'm certainly not unique in this, but you know, what'll light a fire under you when you find out you got a little baby coming mm -hmm. and, um, it did, it took a minute for that, that for that to sw that trigger to flip. Um, I certainly was afraid because I was, how am I going to provide for this little baby mm -hmm. and, um, and, and my scared wife who, you know, is going to muscle her way through school here and, uh, and then have a kid way ahead of schedule. Um, and, um, man, when I remember the drive back that, uh, early Monday morning, I, I waited until like 2 AM to, to leave Courtney on Monday morning mm -hmm. instead of leaving on Sunday, uh, to get back to work. And, um, man, just on the way down there, I was, I was just fired up. And I got down there, I got into that trailer and it was a whole new Charlie. It was just, I will do whatever it takes. Um, so, and we're going to stop this, <laughs> uh, that yeah. comment. All right. Yeah. So that's a great background for getting into logistics. I got to bring you back. This, this conversation needs to breathe a little bit yeah. and uh, we're just getting into the Charlie Workman story. We've gone through the background. We'll call this part one, the way we, we try to keep these close to 30 minutes, yeah. Charlie. So that, that was great. <clears throat> so Charlie just found out that he and his, his new bride were expecting child number one, baby yeah. number one. And he's in new Orleans post Katrina trying to keep it together. And he's got a renewed sense of uh, just, just purpose. purpose. Yeah. That's a great word for it. So mm -hmm. come back uh, next time for part two. We'll continue this conversation. Thanks so much for joining us here at Stories from the River, the Charlie Workman conversation. Thanks for listening to Stories from the River. To check out more episodes, visit storiesfromtheriver.com. Join us again next week. And remember to like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast.